What's going on YouTube? IG here again with another Linux distro review and today I am looking at Netrunner OS. Alright, now this distribution, again by popular request, is a KDE based distribution. And my goodness, what a great KDE distro it is. Uh, it is of course based on Ubuntu just like all of the vast myriad of other distributions and I am going to hope to branch out in the near future but like I said in my previous video on Voyager OS I'm looking at distributions that kind of build on the uh, base of the sort of the official family of Ubuntu so for instance this being a KDE distribution is going to build off the Kubuntu release now if you're wondering uh, I am at home at the moment for the holidays so you're going to hear that bird every now and again squealing uh, I'm going to do my best to edit it out, but we'll just see what happens. So this KDE distribution was recommended to me by quite a few people. I waited for the most recent release, which is of course the 12.12 .12 release according to the Netrunner site, and it is based of course on Ubuntu 12.10. It is slightly more updated than the Kubuntu 12.10 release, and the packages are slightly more up to date, etc, etc. And you can see here by just the pre-installed applications, they cover every single base out of the box. They're not afraid to use GTK or otherwise uh, based applications in this KDE release. It's not a KDE purist release. They're just wanting the best user experience possible and they've really achieved that through uh, through Netrunner. Just the, the, just the amount of polish that they've put into this operating system speaks volumes as to what KDE is capable of when you take the time to customize it. Of course all that hard work has been done for you so you're just going to enjoy the rewards here uh, upon downloading and installing Netrunner OS. As you can see you've got a great selection of software out of the box including Wine and a whole bunch of web apps built of course on the ability of Ubuntu 12.10 to include web apps now in its uh, as, as sort of default kind of applications. Now you're probably wondering why not just use web shortcuts well honestly the only kind of bonus uh, productivity bonus that I can notice is that when you have a keyboard launcher you simply type in the title of the application or the service that you're wanting to use and it will pop up and of course then you'll be able to utilize that application in a full screen window without any browser controls for example if we go to Twitter uh, you can see then it just opens up a limited Mozilla Firefox window and logs us straight into Twitter in a very clean window here. Now the other thing that I really want to emphasize here with Netrunner is the amount of cloud integration that they've built into it. Now you're probably rolling your eyes at this point because cloud integration is kind of overused and overstated in, in a lot of distributions and operating systems nowadays. But really they've done a great job. Uh, KDE has always been very capable when it comes to integrating with cloud, uh, with your cloud services, especially when it comes to personal information management thanks to the Akinati information management system. So a simple add web accounts and you can see that it's as simple as adding a Gmail account or a Facebook own cloud or runners ID. I'll explain what that is in a minute. And you can hook these services into KDE services. So for example, the contact information manage personal information management suite will automatically tie into your calendar and your contacts based on uh, you know Facebook friends or your or your Google contacts which is pretty awesome once you've logged in and then again calendar will also be synchronized to your Google calendar so that you can enter in events and it's bi-directional so it works both ways keeping everything uh, that you run across your mobile devices and your operating system nicely synced and it's uh, and it works very very well again uh, also when it comes to the keyboard launcher KRunner which is extremely powerful you can also then search through emails that you've uh, done through Gmail or through Facebook um, and it will and you'll be able to open up those emails from the search launcher KRunner which is also very very handy for productivity's sake. Now I'm going to I'm going to quickly talk about Runner's ID. Runner's ID is basically another cloud service that you can use uh, that you can sign up for that uh, Netrunner provide you get five gigs uh, of free space per account, so which is really on par with most other cloud services. And again, it's just a cloud storage for syncing your data, your contacts, calendar, pictures, and music, etc. But it's very nice because it's very well tied into the Netrunner OS. It's also worth mentioning that they do have a welcome introduction here as well uh, that gives you a bit of a readme about some issues that you might need to have a heads up on. Uh, as far as you know, for instance, K Wallet barging its way in as soon as you as soon as you open up the OS, and also possible issues and workarounds that you might need to uh, implement in order to get the system working well. 
It also gives you a quick introduction to Runner's ID and what it's capable of, including uh, streaming music to your Android devices and things like that, and also what you can do with the web accounts, just like I've showed you. So I'll throw a link to this web page down below so that you guys can see what this uh, OS is capable of. Of course, it also makes mounting network drives and uh, Samba servers a cinch, which is very, very good. And of course, they have forums and, uh, and help measures if you do get mixed up and confused. But really, they're just using KDE and the and the amazing backend tools that KDE have developed to create a very out of the box, ready to go system that's really capable of handling every kind of element of your digital technology infused life. Again, great selection of apps, a fantastic uh, KDE desktop implementation, and just the speed now of KDE is very impressive. Uh, and just how many options you have here is very good as well. You can also notice that uh, they they do have the more traditional Dolphin layout in that you don't have the cog over here with all the options you do have actual menus here which is nice dolphin is definitely one of the most powerful file managers out there nowadays and uh, you can see here it just gets better with every single kde release that comes along incidentally of course because it is based on ubuntu 12.10 you are running kde 4.9.3 and i imagine in the uh, you are also linked into the Kubuntu backports so that when KDE 4.10 becomes stable, you should be able to download and install that as well. You can see here just by going into the Akinadi personal information management framework, you can see everything that I've got synced up and how how and where it is uh, it is syncing those things up and where it's putting it, piping them out to. And it's quite transparent as well about what information it's using where. And of course, you have to authorize all these things in order to make them work. But once they do, it ties in very succinctly. And I think this has got to be the best implementation of KDE's tools that I've seen across any distribution. So at the end of the day, Netrunner OS is a fantastic KDE distribution. Uh, and of course, if you've had, if you've used KDE before, you're going to feel right at home. And if you haven't, and you're just trying out uh, the different operating systems and the different desktop environments, definitely recommend that you start uh, with Netrunner OS when it comes to KDE, simply because they've polished it so nicely. And, uh, and also they've made it very, very simple to change the themes. And they've given you some very Windows-esque themes here as well, including a Metro looking theme, the original Oxygen themes, and a few other Windows 7 looking themes. So again, here we are nearly at the end of the year of 2012, and this is definitely my pick for the KDE distribution of the year, uh, simply because cloud integration is there, great selection of desktop apps that is not based on the desktop environment itself, and what is best for the end user. It is a sizable 1.4 download but it's not too much and with the selection of apps that you get and the complete desktop experience that Netrunner OS provides you're really not lacking here at all. It's also worth mentioning the Muon package management suite. Uh, Muon of course being the KDE sort of equivalent of uh, the package management that's available now including Muon Discover, which is sort of like a very nice software center that you can use to come across applications that you might want to use. You can see here popularity contests and ratings. You have applications that are categorized on those results. But then of course you have categorization based on what the application does as per many other software managers out there. You can see multimedia here comes up with the top listed results, including a screenshot of the application, the icon, and a quick description of what that application does. This makes it incredibly easy to find good quality open source software. And really, once you click install here, it's a simple one click story. It's very nice indeed. And this is the sort of polish that you come to expect from a KDE distribution. Then of course, you have the Muon Package Manager and the Muon Update Manager as well. Muon Package Manager basically being like your Synaptic Package Manager, many of the same functions and many of the same controls here as you would expect in the Synaptic Package Manager. So you're catered for both sides there, both the new timers and the old timers. Performance wise, KDE is flying along nowadays. I've got no issues with performance at all. Could be because of I've, I've got a fairly decent high spec system as well, but there are low fat settings that you can install to trim the KDE experience down a bit, not make it so resource intensive. Of course, it is gonna be resource intensive because it is KDE and it has a lot of indexing and all sorts of fun stuff going on in the background. But if we have a look at the system monitor as of right now, including the screencasting, you can see I'm using about a gig of RAM and you can see my eight gigs, uh, my eight core CPU is kind of churning away there based on the screen casting results. That'll be all from me for today. Like the video if you did indeed like the video and feel free to leave a comment down below of what your favorite features of KDE are and also any other suggestions. I'm looking for a polished LXDE based distribution, preferably Ubuntu, but I'm open to other suggestions as well. 
I shall catch you all in the very near future. Happy holidays and Merry New Year, or however you say that. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.